Let's assume for the moment that all the people who make guitar lesson videos are top level experts and everything that they teach is awesome. It's totally correct. It's totally accurate. It's totally useful. It's great. It's perfect. Now, there are good teachers out there, but most aren't top level. And although there is some good stuff on YouTube and other websites, there's a lot more stuff that is, well, just isn't that great. Anyway, but for the moment, let's assume that everything you can find online is awesome. So now imagine yourself trying to learn from all these different people. How are you supposed to determine what you should learn first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Does it matter? If it does matter, why does it matter? Let me ask you the same question in a different way. If you want to master any aspect of your guitar playing, does the order of the things that you learn matter? Or is the order completely arbitrary? Yes, the order matters and it matters a lot. If you bake a cake, do you add the eggs before or after it comes out of the oven? If you're driving a car, do you put your foot on the brake to stop the car before or after you come to a red light? If your dentist is going to fix a problem in your mouth, do you want him to give you the anesthetic before or after he drills a hole in your tooth? So now let's imagine that you're learning more about arpeggios and how the fretting hand can connect arpeggios and do creative things with arpeggios. But your picking hand doesn't have the skill yet to really play this. You can't sweep through them quickly, so you can't really play them. You've got this theoretical knowledge and you spend your time day after day learning about all the awesome, cool, great sounding arpeggios, but you can't yet execute them. You don't have the chops in your picking hand yet. So what good does all this theoretical knowledge give you if you can't apply any of it? You're not using your time very efficiently by learning that way. Therefore, a lot of that time that you spend learning, practicing, playing is really being wasted. It's not used very well. Yes, the information is still valuable, but only potentially valuable at some point in the future. It has no practical, useful value for you yet. You need to focus on your picking hand. Here's another example. Let's say you learn something that will increase the speed of your fretting hand. You've got some decent speed now and you really just want your fingers to be more accurate, faster, or play more complex things. But you're struggling still with your picking hand. You're struggling when you have to change strings. You're struggling if there's any string skipping involved. It doesn't matter how fast your fretting hand gets if your picking hand can't yet keep up. If your fretting hand outruns your picking hand, then learning more about improving your fretting hand can't really help you yet unless maybe you're just focusing on legato. The point is you'd be wasting your time to focus more on the left hand right now. Now, someday this may become useful when you finally get your picking hand to catch up with your fretting hand. It's really frustrating when your strengths get stronger, but your weaknesses are preventing you from freely using the strengths that you have. So imagine your weaknesses like a big fat anchor that holds back your strengths and now it's hard to get anywhere or do anything. Here's another analogy. This is one of the cars that I own. It produces 764 horsepower, and yes, it's really fast. But if we connect a 5,000 pound boat and trailer to the back of the car, it's not going to drive as fast anymore. The car is still cool, it still has the same amount of power, but the additional 5,000 pounds holds the car back from being able to drive very, very fast. Now, this is what I'm talking about. We want to unhook the trailer from the back of the car so we can go faster. The same is true with your guitar playing. We want to unhook the weaknesses you may have so that you can use the strengths that you already got. So, let's unhook the trailer from the car. 
because without even increasing the speed of the car or adding more power, it's already going to go faster, right? Okay, so don't worry about trying to get more power from the car's engine. Don't worry about putting wheelie bars on the back of the car because you think you're going to pop a wheelie because you got 764 horsepower. You don't need that. You just need to get rid of the 5,000 pound boat attached. Now, it's easier to see that the order in which you learn and practice things matter, and it matters a lot. So don't chase shiny object constantly looking for the next video or the next whatever, okay? Don't constantly be looking for the next new thing to learn or the next new technique to master. There is a time and a place for all of that, of course. But we've got to focus on the weaknesses that are holding you back from using the strengths that you have and that you're developing. You'll become a much better guitar player much faster when this happens. And there's another benefit to doing this as well. When you have less anchors weighing you down, guitar playing becomes a whole lot more fun. When I'm teaching a student and I tell him we're going to focus on weaknesses that are holding him back, sometimes the student misunderstands what I really mean. He sometimes assumes that what I'm saying is he ought to always work on one thing at a time or that he ought to master one thing before moving on to the next. While this is sometimes true, most of the time it's not. Now I realize that may sound like a contradiction from what I've just been talking about earlier in this video. It's not. Let me clarify this point. Let's go back to our arpeggio example. The one where the fretting hand may be more developed than your picking hand. Here, the picking hand is clearly the weakness and we ought to focus our technique practice mostly on the picking hand and two hand synchronization. Sometimes students then assume that they should only practice the technique of arpeggios and not practice or not try to practice the integration of arpeggios with other techniques. That is the mistake. Integration practice, where you work on combining different techniques together, integration practice ought to be practiced before you've even mastered the individual technical skills in isolation. What? Integration is something that you ought to be working on all the time, even before you have fully mastered the two or three or four different techniques that you plan to integrate together. As long as you know what the right way to play each techniques are, even if you can't fully play them fluently yet. Learning to integrate your skills together is something I spend a lot of time training my students to do. That's one of the reasons why I have so many students who play at really high excellent levels. They're not taught in a linear way. I teach them from a 360 degree geometric approach and that has worked much better in getting students bigger results in a shorter period of time. But I'll tell you right now, it takes more focus and trust in the process for this to work. So, if you're interested in learning and practicing in this way, you'll need to be more patient with yourself and trust the process even more. This works best for people who do it. In my experience teaching literally thousands of people around the world, this is the better approach. If you like my YouTube videos, you'll love my personal breakthrough guitar lessons. I'm going to show you exactly how to transform your guitar playing from just being okay to being really awesome. Even if you're feeling stuck right now or you're having self-doubts about yourself, imagine just how much better your guitar playing will be when you know exactly what to do, exactly how to practice, and you have the right order and you have the guidance and roadmap to get you there. I've done this for thousands of people over the years. If you do the work, if you practice at least 30 minutes per day, if you follow what I'm telling you, I'm absolutely certain I can help you become the guitar player you want to be. Unlike other lessons, you won't get generic cookie cutter lessons from me. You get lessons customized to you and who you are, 
what your goals are, your challenges, your strengths, your weaknesses, your learning style, experience, frustrations, and most importantly, who you want to become. So check out my Breakthrough Guitar Lessons at tomhess.net forward slash guitar and see if they're right for you. See you on the other side.